Ladies, please join me as I welcome our second keynote speaker, Mrs. Tara Feladro for an amazing session. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, ladies. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you, Choma, uh, for the invitation. Um, and, and wonderful panel. The last panel had my very good friend, uh, Falake, on. Um, it's great. It was lovely to see her. Um, and to just hear some of the, their thoughts, it's going to be similar to some of the things I'm going to be sharing today. So we started 2020. And all of us, I think because of the fact that it was 20 and 20, we're all very excited. We're excited that there was, you know, uh, a new year and that there were new possibilities. And people were pumped up. I'm sure you were pumped up because I was pumped up. Uh, I remember going away on, on retreats and the hotel room where I was staying, I didn't realize after five days, I had, I had gone on a re personal retreat. And as I was walking out of the room, I looked behind the door and I realized the room was actually 2020 because I didn't come out of the room the entire time I was there. So I didn't know that my room number was 2020. It just hit me at that moment. Um, and it just said to me, there was, this wasn't a coincidence. And I'm sure that many of us also had different signs at the very beginning that made you feel like 2020 was amazing, was going to be amazing. <laughs> but 2020 has been, <laughs> has been a year and a half. And by all means, um, for us, <laughs> I've had the first time in my life that I've had so many people die at the same time. Like, I don't think in my entire 43 years of being on earth that I've known so many people die in the same year in short periods of time. And I know that death and grief is, takes so much out of every human. And then to now have one, two, three, four, and five, incredible. Uh, for someone who's run a business for over 20 years, we had to shut down business for almost three months. When I say shut down business, I mean literally not generate an income. And when you have almost 200 employees that you need to pay their salaries, <laughs> it's not a joke because you're talking about 200 lives. You're talking about 200 families. And so I wanted to share something with you. I wanted to tell a story but hopefully help you to see practical steps that I have taken. Because there are some of you here who may not have a business that you've run for 20 years. And you may not have 200 employees, but you may have three. You may have five. You may have 10. Or you may have 50. Or you may not even have any at all, but you aspire to have. There are some of you here who have children. And I'm going to share with you the challenges of this season. Because we're redefining the future. The future is here and it's not going to change. Today, we're organizing a conference where we're sitting in an empty hall and projecting. That never happened before because it seemed like it had to be this way. We've had vandalism. I'm sure some of you have heard about my store in Surulere that was vandalized. I mean, when he, if you walk into the mall, it was like a war zone. Everything totally destroyed. We're talking about economic assets. People who have invested, sometimes their life savings, they borrowed from the bank, set up shop, and then they are looted. Everything is taken. And then not, not only is everything taken, everything is destroyed, meaning shop fittings are destroyed. And you wonder, if you took everything, why do you have to break the mirror? If you took everything, why must you smash the glass? Couldn't you just have taken everything and left? No, there was something that said, I will take from you, but I will make sure that you feel it to your bones. The question is, if anybody had told me that Nigerians could do this to Nigerians, I would say no, because we're loving people. We are this and we are that and the other. But here it is, 2020 was telling me something different. 2020 was telling me something different. 2020 told me, number one, you will have your business and you will have nearly 30 stores. But those 30 stores, in a period of two and a half months, they will not be opened. Which means that every stock that you have in those stores and every employee that you have trained to service customers will not be able to interface with their customers for a period of three months. It also said to me 
that every stock that I had ordered that was on the way will not be able to arrive in Nigeria because customs was not working, because the efforts were short. It also means that if any employee gets COVID, you are talking about someone that could have lost their life. And these are the things that were going through my mind. In this 2020, that was supposed to be this exciting year, that was supposed to be a remarkable year. No. I sat in my house on a Saturday morning and I got a call from a friend of mine. And she was crying and screaming on the phone. A good friend of ours had just died. And young. Why? Was she ill? I checked my phone. When last did I chat with her? I saw our chat. And I knew that this wasn't normal, but it was from her to another person, to another person, to another person. And we look at what happened in the last two weeks in October, just after we had opened, reopened for business, September came, people were paying school fees. So business was not as great. October was going to be our outstanding October. We were so excited about October because we felt that by the time October comes, People will be more interested in getting our service, paying for the service, buying our product. And now our stores were opened across the country. And then voila, there was NSARS, the protest. And soon enough, Lagos was shut down for one and a half weeks. That is daily income and daily revenue gone. And just when we were about to come out of the one and a half weeks of revenue depleting, I get a call that the Nwangu Soya shopping complex has been vandalized and looted and not a store was spared. I said, well, I can understand why people will, will steal from ShopRite. It makes sense. ShopRite has food, has this, has that. Oh, this other shop has electronics. But makeup? Who will steal makeup? I don't think so. They go there and they've emptied the store. Not only have they emptied the store, they took the computer, took the POS. And you wonder who is going to, how are they going to use it? Are they going to swipe card into it, into which account, right? POS, the safe that has cash sales, um, and anything that represents CCTVs, all were taken. And you will think with all this back to back to back, as an entrepreneur who has experienced this in 2020, should I still be standing? And should I still have my head screwed on tight? And I do. I do not because I'm not experiencing challenge. And that's why I told the stories of closing down almost 30 stores in a period of two and a half months, which means that you don't sell, you don't generate money. When you are having to, when you are a CEO and you have 200 people you've been paying their salaries for a long period of time. In two and a half months, when you don't generate, those people still have to get paid. How do they get paid? That is the end of sleep. If you've ever owned a business and you've ever had to have one or two people who you're paying, you won't sleep at night. And I started realizing I was going on a downward spiral and I couldn't control where I was going. And I'm sure there are some people here who are also experiencing that. You're experiencing moments where things are out of your control. In building a business in Nigeria, you always feel that as long as you can manage yourself and leave government out of it, things will be fine. There was no you. There was no government. There was nothing you could do. The only thing that you could do was sit at home. And day in, day out, you couldn't do anything. And so I'm looking at this, at this period from March to April to May, and then having the personal losses of lives of friends that you know, people that you know closely, and then the panic gets in. And I started sleeping and waking up in the middle of the night with what they call panic attacks because I was wondering who was going to die next. I was wondering when we will be able to go back to do business. Will there still be a business after this? Because with every store, you have a different landlord. And the rents that expired in February, will not, the landlords will not call you to say, do not pay the rent. 
The rent that expired in March, the landlord is not going to say, don't pay the rent. Even though those stores were not open. PXCN is not going to say that we're not going to charge you for power. They will still charge you for power, which means that these reoccurring expenses continue regardless. So I asked myself one day, why am I waking up with anxiety? Why am I waking up sweating? What I saw was I was losing control of myself. And in speaking to so many people over the last two weeks, I have realized that what people are experiencing now is what I experienced a few months ago. And the question for me was, what did I do to get out of it? By the time I walked into my store, people said to me, you have courage to go in and look at that sort of destruction. I walked in there, yes, afraid that I may react, I may break down, but I didn't break down. I didn't break down because I was prepared for that moment even though I didn't know that I was. And so, in speaking to many people, I found that people are disoriented. There are many people that want to leave Nigeria because for them, there is no longer hope. But we, we cannot redefine the future outside of Nigeria as Nigerians. That's the truth. There is no house of Tara without Nigeria. That's the truth. And as long as we build businesses Within the context of Nigeria, Nigeria must be fixed. And it can only be fixed by us Nigerians. So when I looked at all the damage that was done, I didn't see hoodlums. What did I see? I saw discontented, disenfranchised citizens of Nigeria who have been left by us, the educated, us, the enlightened, us that were taught about democracy in school, us that were taught about the roles of government, us, who many of us are also Christians, some of us Muslims, and we have been mandated by our faith to speak against injustice. Is there injustice in Nigeria? Yes, there is. When government is supposed to fund schools and does not, that's injustice. When government is supposed to provide health care and does not, that is injustice. And those of us who have the knowledge that understand the role of government, no matter how young we are, when we don't speak up, we are not speaking up for the injustice. And so the lives that are lost in hospitals that should have saved them, those blood is on us as Nigerians. No matter where you go to, whether you go to Canada or not, it is on you and it's on me. So I can look at all that and say government did bad. IG of police should have been there. And I can say and continue to speak from now to tomorrow. But the change will only come when we decide that the future of Nigeria is in our hands and that we have to change our behavior for us to see a difference. And what am I saying? We have to integrate those people. If you have the opportunity and you live in a vicinity, there's no vicinity that does not have a slum around them. Galvanize people within your community and begin to talk to these people. Engage them. Don't pretend like they don't exist because they do exist. And the same way they came and looted at Dino Angusara shopping complex is the same way they will loot your house and my house. In a short period of time. We saw it during the xenophobia. We saw it during uh, Occupy. Every time there's a discomfort, there's a discomfort. Any time there's a, a light uprising, this will happen to you and I. And as long as you are on this call, if you're a woman on this call, Listen to me. There is no business that you can build. There is no career you can build in Nigeria without the poor and the disadvantage being cared for because they are coming for us. And so my charge for everyone who's here today is take the time to remember that we need to integrate. If you're having conversations with your friends today, three of you, four of you, five of you, take the time to say, what does this slum need? What does this environment need that we can provide? Is it to do lessons for the children? Is it to teach them English, find the curriculum? Is it to go there every month to teach a subject? Is it to deprive ourselves of a new wig and take the money and provide food? You will say that's the responsibility of the government. Unfortunately, we have a government that does not work. And guess what? When there is a crisis, it is not 
the government is not asked what they are going to. They're coming to your house. They're coming to your shop. And if every one of us decides to adopt one community, one child, and it's not just about plenty of money, it's the little things that count. I heard a story about a supermarket that wanted to be vandalized. And the youths around that community said that store could not be vandalized. Why? Because during COVID, that store provided food for them. Let's think about the poor and the vulnerable. We can't build businesses without thinking about the poor and the vulnerable. Now, going back to my story of how did I come out of this period? And there are many people who are feeling that way. Listen, your creativity has been stolen from you. You ha now have lethargy. You are finding the thoughts to move from where you are. Because of the state of your mind, there are three things I want you to focus on. I want something practical that you can take away, take with you. So like I made a statement about physical exercise. In this period where there's so much disorientation, do not take your physical health as a joke. Physical, yes. If it's 20 minutes every day, you must do one exercise. Do something. Because every day that you are emboldened, you are surrounded with the negative news that you are hearing, you are disoriented. You don't know what is seeming into your system. Every day that somebody tells you about something that is going wrong in one place or the other, you get more sad, isn't it? That is our reality. But to combat that, before you step out of your house, make sure that you have done some exercise that has caused you to sweat. What happens when that happens? Dopamine. Hormones that keep you excited come up because you exercise. Don't take it. It's no longer about weight loss. No. Weight loss is still far. We're not talking about weight loss now. We're talking about your mental health that is tied to your physical being. So as a person, we are three. We are, phys we are body, we are spirit, and we are soul. Your body is like your phone. The handset. That handset, without the handset, without the the package, without the machine, nothing can be done. But at the same time, you must also have the operating system of that phone, whether it's the iOS or the Android. Without that operating system, the phone still cannot function. And that is your mind. Guys, there is so much out there that is going to even make our mind work. Access to social media, comparing ourselves with one another constantly. Because every time you open the internet, if somebody is selling a message, somebody is selling a market, the market could be better than you, and you buy it. The market can be, you are useless, and you buy it. But somebody is selling markets every day. Every day you go on Instagram, and you look on somebody's page, there is an agenda. The agenda could be to make you sad. You may not know, but you buy it. You get off social media, and you find out that your spirit is dampened as a result of it. This is not, there will be no future if we don't take a hold of our mind. And how do you take a hold of your mind? Affirmations. Don't get out of your house without telling yourself who you are. As a woman, what your capabilities are. Do your strength assessment test. Identify what, what your strengths are. Tell yourself, these are my strengths and this is what makes me special. This is what brings value to my society and my community. This is what my friends have said about me. This is what my mother has said about me. Make sure that those affirmations are repeated over and over again before you step out. Lastly, your spirit. You are not the one that brought yourself to this world. There's a manufacturer. That manufacturer is the owner of the SIM card. Without the SIM card, the phone ain't working. So my sisters, this is a time to get closer to the manufacturer. Listen, he's a father. He's interested in a relationship with you. He is following you every day. He just wants you to follow back. All I'm just saying to you, say a short five seconds prayer. Every day, 10, 15, until the time begins to grow. Or say the prayer that you need to pray. But you need to arm yourself to redefine the future. You need to arm yourself with physical fitness. 
I have been exercising now for 93 days non-stop. 93 days non-stop. And it's the reason why I can face the challenges of running a business in this time and tell you I can still succeed. If you spend time exercising, ideas will come to you. I told you about what happened at the earlier, uh, um, the earlier month in the year. One of the days I was exercising, I got this idea to engage a partnership. Immediately I called the guy. He said, I have been thinking about this, but I did not think of calling you. That is the power of physical exercise. You will begin to have ideas that you can implement. And the biggest deal we've done in many years, because of that transaction, it is possible. And so I'm calling, and so I'm calling every single woman who's out there, there is no future without Nigeria. And Nigeria needs to be fixed. But there's also no future without you being okay. And for you to be okay, it's no longer going to, go, no longer going to be church and prayer. It's going to be you and God, something personal. That is between you and God. It's not going to be only the spiritual. It's also going to be the mental and the emotional. Because there is so much going, out, going on out there that is driving and calling for your mental health to be warped. And you have to be militant about taking a hold of it. But lastly, don't take your physical health as a joke in this time. Exercise. Exercise, do something that works. But like I said, she goes on YouTube. I don't go on YouTube. I work for one hour every day and I do planks. Now, Falake does boopy challenge, she does the planks, she does aerobics. In short, she does everything you can think. The only thing she doesn't do is walk. But you find what works for you, but do it. I want to lose weight. I'm already skinny enough. If I try and lose weight, I'll be finished. I'll turn to bonga fish, right? So it is not, it's, a, it's, it's not just about physical health. It's also about the impact the exercise will have on my mental well-being. My charge to you is that there's no redefining the future. If we do not take care of ourselves, 360 Woman is all about personal development. And for you to take the time to develop yourself across board, physical, mental, or spiritual, then you can truly be the 360 Woman. I would like to explain something about one of my key words for this year is resilience in my closing. And I checked the dictionary for the word resilience. It says it's the capacity to recover quickly from difficulty. So there's no resilience without difficulty. It means that every single one of us, for us to be resilient, we will have to experience some form of difficulty. And if you are developing, if you're experiencing some form of difficulty, like I have experienced, but still standing, but still thriving, then you can experience difficulty and still thrive and still grow. Somebody saw my, my video when I went to visit my, my looted stone. And she said, it is too early for me. She said, I needed to take some time to grieve. And I said, I've grieved already. I grieved at the beginning of the year. I'm not grieving anymore. It's time to look at the situation and say, say, say to the situation, it could have been worse. There could have been an employee in that building at the time this was done and that person could have been killed. There is nothing that we cannot replace, but we cannot replace a life. And so in looking at my challenge, I'm looking at it differently and saying, this is what I see, but this is what I choose to be. So the capacity to recover quickly from, di to recover quickly from dif difficulties. So there has to be difficulties. There needs to be a recovery and it has to be done quickly. So when you're thinking about physical fitness, remember that your creativity will be touched if you're not exercising. It will touch your source of hope because you may become hopeless. It may also touch the, your capacity to dream again. Your capacity to dream again. I heard somebody, I called one of the ladies whose store was, who was, store was vandalized. And she said, Nigeria has killed capacity to kill your dream. Because Nigeria is just one country. Your dream is bigger than Nigeria. The investment that God has made on the inside of you is much more than Lagos. It's much more than Nigeria. It's much more than Africa. And if you see it that way, then you know that one shock in Surulere is not enough to kill you. But that's a state in which she was fragile and broken. And I know there are many people who are like her, who I have not had the chance to speak to. But I've come to charge you 
that your capacity to keep your source of hope in tune is dependent on hope in tune. It's dependent on what you allow and what you disallow. So this is the time to say, I refuse to allow this season to pass by and I walk, back, walk into my future and feel I have lost rather than gained. That is gained. That responsibility is in your hand. So to stay resilient, we have to ask ourselves, am I willing to dream again? Am I willing to put the light on again? And my charge to you today is if you want to redefine the future, put the lights back on. Dream again. Inspire someone while you're doing it so that Nigeria can be better for, for it and you can for it and you can truly be that 360 woman that we desire you to be. God bless. Thank you very much. Uh, I heard you talk about integration, you know, that we cannot, you know, we cannot become all that we want to become. We cannot become the 360 women that we, we, are, we are driving at. Complete all women, you know, in a society as Nigeria, like Nigeria, without getting integrated, going down to our, our, our communities and getting involved you know, making our impacts within our communities. And it brings, it raises a very pertinent question. You know, the women gender, we cannot, we, are, we cannot deny the fact that females, in Nigeria especially, I don't want to talk about Africa because I don't live in other nations, but I see that it's also, the conversations online, you see that it's not far-fetched from other African nations. Well, the culture within Nigeria, if for integration, the, fe the female gender, has already been shortchanged. So it tells that there's little we can, even if when we want to, there's little we can do because we see that people are not listening because we are female. I, should I answer you? Yes, ma'am. Because yeah, I cannot believe you're asking this question. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why the reality of things, ma'am. My dear, mm -hmm. there's something called um, mental blocks and mm. mindsets yes, that shape behavior. If I went around, I'm not saying that is not, that could not be the reality for others, but it's not my reality. Yes. And I refuse to allow that to be my reality. The minute you start to say the environment determines how I am or how I can be, then that's what becomes your reality. Yesterday I had given the example of how when you want to buy a car, and you want to buy a particular color. The minute you decide that that's the color you buy, you start noticing that the car is everywhere. It's the power of the mind. We cannot, as women, begin to say to ourselves, oh, because I'm a woman, they will treat me as this. That mindset also shapes people's behavior towards you. Mm. I expect that when I walk into a room as a woman, my value will be, that's my expectation. And that is what I get. I expect that when I walk into a, 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 the room, that women will support me. And that's my reality. Women support me. With this crisis that just happened, people are calling from different parts of the world just to say, I am so sorry about this. We must come out of that place of saying, oh, the environment is, is not going to allow me to. No. If you say that, then that becomes a reality. If you think that that becomes your, your reality, Think about the women who have succeeded regardless and expect to succeed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're talking about integration. And I have found that in speaking to many people about what I thought uh, about the, what you call the disenfranchised citizens who are reacting and they're attacking the, what you consider the educated, the exposed, sometimes you call them the privileged, sometimes you call them the middle class, as long as you have a car, as long as you speak English, as long as you went to school, mm -hmm. you are that class that these people want to attack. Target, yeah, and yeah. they want to target, right? Mm -hmm. When we're talking about integration, I have found that women have been the most responsive. Women are saying, yes, we need to do this. Because women have empathy. It, many times it comes with them naturally. It's a gift. Let's embrace our gifts as women and take it to the world and add value to the world based on those gifted. But let's not shortchange ourselves by saying, oh, this as a woman, that as a woman. I know there are cultural nuances, but think beyond those cultural nuances and change them because of how you see yourself. Fantastic. Um, that question was very deliberate because I know that 
We have over, we have over people from over 15 states in Nigeria connected from different um, rural and urban places. We have people calling and say they cannot, they couldn't send emails. So we need, we, I needed okay. them to hear it from okay. you, especially okay. to know that being a female is not an excuse yes. not to deliver the value you yes. carry yes. wherever you go. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I wanna, my next question would be around um, the, the team, again, just mm -hmm. diving deeply deep into it. Um, we design in the future. I want to, it's a personal question that's about your journey and at the House of Stara story. Um, you have, over the years, over the years, run a successful business, beauty business, Pan-African successful business, beauty business brand. And um, you, you have grown from being a starter. You know, I can't hear, I've, I know how many times I've listened to your story when you had a small makeup box and you had your first landlord who was Larry Olishola and all of that. And then it, be, it has now become this big global brand um, in this same Nigeria that we live in. What would you say made it so for you? What, would you, what was the differentiating factor? Because a lot of, you pioneered the, the makeup industry in Nigeria, but a lot of people try to start after you and are nowhere to be. Very few of them that can say they started closely after you did, that are yeah. still thriving. What did, would you say stood out for you? Because remember, I remember at those times, we also had, the Naira was never a, a, good, a good, solid currency. So what stood out, what made it so for you? What was the differentiating factor for I, you? I think, that, I think that the differentiating factor changes over time. Mm -hmm. uh, at the very begin, beginning, I, you know, I hear people say that they are, they are people of, you know, there are some people who are lucky, some people who are braced, some people who are fortunate. And I say grace is available to every single person, right? Every single person grace is available to. But there are some other people who put in the discipline and the work, and I put it in. I put it in, I put day and night sweat and blood to build my brand. I showed up when I didn't feel like showing up. Mm. I committed to developing a brand that was sustainable for the long term. I put in the work. And so it's not going to be about, oh, luck, or yes, we may be graced, but that grace is available to everybody. The difference between one person and the other is that they take the grace and they put the discipline and the hard work into it and delivering consistently on. So if you say you're a photographer, how many times have you disappointed customers? How many times have they told you to show up somewhere and you were not there on time? For me, it was about showing up and showing up consistently. I put in the work. That's at startup stage. And then as the business began to grow, I, had, I realized that I needed to build a vision, a vision that inspires me to continue to show up, a vision that also will inspire other people that work within my organization. And so it became clear and important to create a picture of the future. In creating a picture of the future, what I found was every time I, 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 I said the vision of House of Tara, I was inspired to continue to deliver. And I found that it had began to attract people to want to give of themselves. I mean, you know, we, you look at House of Tara and you see people who have worked in the company for 10 years, right? You see people for, who have worked in the company for 12 years. And you wonder, what is the reason why somebody will stay in the same organization for 12 years, especially the type of business that we're in, where we are not a bank or we're not an oil and gas company, we're not Chevron or Shell or all those other organizations. It's the power of the vision to attract people, but also to keep them delivering day in, day out, because they are also inspired by the vision. At some point, again, it was not, no longer about building a vision. It was also about building a sustainable business for the long term. And I've looked at, across the continent, and there are not so many companies that have outlived their founders. I think about as a child, brands like Tandy Gorana, brands like Concord Newspapers, brands like Okada Airlines. And today, I'm a 43-year-old woman, and those brands were brands that I knew as a child, but those brands no longer exist. And so for me, it became clear that I had to build a company that will outlive me. And in the intentionality of building processes, building systems that, are, that, were, that were superior to me as the owner and the CEO of the company, 
and following through on those processes, regardless of whether they were comfortable or not comfortable. Because generally, culturally, you know, many I always tease that when you're when they when I ask women, I say, Can you cook your mother's stew? And it will taste exactly like your mother's stew. Many of the women say they can't. Then I ask, can your sister cook your, your mother's stew exactly the way your mother cooks it? And usually, no, it doesn't smell the same. The question is, how come Auntie Jemima, the pancake syrup, is sold in Nigeria but was created in the US? It is because Auntie Jemima taught her cousin, her niece, whoever it was, that created that product with measurement to say, this amount of teaspoon of this, this teaspoon of this, this um, pinch of salt and what have you. And then there was a concerted effort in creating a recipe that produced the same outcome all the time. And that is why Aunt Jemima syrup can be in Nigeria and being sold here. Your mother's jollof rice, can it be exported? If somebody decided to cook it in America, would it taste exactly the same? No, because usually our mothers don't teach us with those measurements. And so as we're building businesses, for me, I got to a point where I wanted to build a business that the outcomes will be the same whether I'm there or not, that the culture will be the same whether I'm there or not. And I focused and became intentional. And that was why House of Tara got the um, Jobberman, uh, comp- one of the best places to work for in one, um, 100 oh, wow. to work yes, for in Nigeria. It's that intentionality mm-hmm. in, in building systems and processes that can outlive me. That's intentionality is what you're seeing. Wow. Wow. Powerful. Powerful. Showing up even when you don't feel like. Showing up, remaining consistent, becoming, becoming and staying intentional. You know, doing it even when you don't feel like and finding better ways to do the things you do. You heard her loud and clear. No other person would have said it better to you like she has just delivered it to you. Um, uh, the next question would be, what is your advice for a woman just starting out and wants to... <laughs> your lovers are online. <laughs> your fans are online. Okay. So she says, what is your advice for women just starting out and wants to be like you? <laughs> okay. Okay, I would say don't try to be like me. Try to be like yourself. And why? Why do I say that? Because comparisons and comparing is very dangerous. Actually, the Bible says that he that compares himself to another is not wow. wise, okay? We don't have the same skill set. You don't have the same strengths. Uh, I am a, I'm a communicator, right? I win others over. But there are some other people who, have, who are activators, right? And based on their giftings, they can be anything they want. My charge to you is if you're starting now, take the time to know what your strengths are. It helps you to become more confident. It lets, it, it lets you know, even in relationships, the value that you bring. So I know for a fact that no matter how talented and, um, and brilliant and handsome my husband is, right? I know the value I bring to the relationship that makes him realize that this is somebody. This is somebody of value. But when you do not know what your strengths are, then you don't know what value you bring. Every time I show up into that marriage, I am showing up with my value. I'm not showing up as Kemi. I'm not showing up as Yvonne or Choma. I am showing up as Tara. So I want you to focus on yourself, assess yourself, and say, what is it? Maybe it is that you are caring, you are kind, you are thoughtful, you are considerate. These are strengths that you have that you can bring to bear in the work that you do. And say to yourself, based on these strengths, this is a sort of career that I should build. I'm not just going to take any job, work anywhere, but I'm going to work in places that gives me the opportunity to thrive because I'm working on my strengths. Then you can truly be fulfilled. I think what I'm saying, what I see today as, as a 43-year-old woman, it's a woman who's fulfilled, a woman who's, who's content, mm. right? And the reason why I'm so is because I am genuinely conversant with who I am. I'm not trying to be anybody else. And I want you to start early to think that same way. Thank you very much, ma'am. Any man who compares himself with another is not one. You heard that loud and clear. You can only be the best version of who you are. No, who not who Tara Fela drew to you. Yes, we love her. She inspires us daily. Really want to be like her, but man, when God created us, 
He created a unique spec. He created you for a unique purpose. Yes, we can go to her for mentorship. She keeps inspiring us. When we need clarity, we go to her. Um, she's the guide. But please, as she, has, she has admonished us today. Don't seek to become like her. You know, seek to become the best, the best version of who you are. She has resources online. She has um, sessions, training sessions that she, executive training sessions, well, executive training sessions she wants. Please invest in yourself and attend these sessions when she has them. Listen to her YouTube videos. I remember how I, uh, um, how I was chasing after TFD. Back back. Yes, you know, I always <laughs> tell the story whenever I, I always talk about, whenever I talk about you in any session, how you saw me in UI. You know, I saw the flyer um, on Facebook on a Friday. I'm like, okay, TFD is speaking in UI that, um, that Saturday. Finished lecture. I went, okay, I, I, left, I left for Ibadan because my school is not far, Berkota to Ibadan. So I left, I left the, my doctor very early that morning just to be there on time and sit in front. And whilst I was working out from the backstage, apparently you had noticed me and noticed me. He said, Yvonne, is this not you again? What are you doing here? <laughs> I was just smiling. So please, you have no excuse. She inspires you, look for her resources, listen to her, um, send her mails. Well, happy here with that sent to you and to you know. But do your best to be the best version of yourself. And that's why God has also put her in our lives to help guide us. Now, the last question I promise you okay. is, how do we dream again mm. and start from scratch mm. when it seems like the world is running very fast mm. and your community, bracket, mm. family, friends, mm. are not in support or encouraging you? Things keep weighing you down. Mm. How do you dream again? Mm. My darling, there's something called self-motivation. And self-motivation is the most important form of motivation. If you wait for people to support you, they may not support you. And it doesn't mean you're not doing what is right. But say because they can't see your vision. They can't see what you see. Shut out the noise. Take some time off social media. Take some time to pause. Pausing is important. Um, David said, you know, he'll guide me beside still waters. Still waters is a representation of a place that is quiet, that is still, that is not noisy. When you are in this, in this what you've described to me now, it makes me feel like you're someone who's, who's overwhelmed. This is a time to retreat. And retreating means... Shut everything out. Don't ask anybody for counsel. Don't ask anybody what you, should, you need to do next. Get quiet. And getting quiet is connecting with your creator. Look for spiritual practices that you can get involved in over a period of time so that you can get a reassurance from your SIM card, as I described earlier on. Listen, if you are waiting for people to encourage you, you may be wasting your time. So believe in what you believe by yourself, on your own, when nobody's there. Why do you believe what you believe? Why do you believe what you believe? And many times, until you believe, you're not able to sell your dream to somebody else. So sometimes the reason why they don't, they don't support you is because you don't sound articulate about your dreams. You're not sure about your dreams. You're not confident about your dreams. And guess what? Excitement, confidence is contagious. It's contagious. If you feel it, people will catch up on it. Lastly, how do you dream again? Where did you write those dreams? Give yourself a day. I'm going to mourn now. Mourn how I feel today. But from the 1st of November, it's a new day. And I'm going to pick up from where I stopped off. Start again. But not looking back. Because like Lot's wife, when she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. So I don't want you to look back. No more regret. But pick a date that you decide that I will start again. And to dream again means today, the 1st of November, what I decide to do is to move forward and to take one step in front of the other. One step in front of the other. Wow. Amazing. The power to the ways to dream again. Take one step as you go. Believe in yourself. 
believe in yourself. You know, whilst you were speaking, I remembered when 360 Woman Africa started. I don't know if you remember the story of how 360 Woman started. Okay, I, I would, uh, just to, to bear what credence and buttress what she just explained, um, in, in trying to fulfill purpose and discover what purpose was, I, I often say that, so she went to speak somewhere at Bowen University or Babcock, Bowen or Babcock, one of those schools. And I couldn't show up there as usual, but I knew that. And she had announced that she would be tweeting while she, you know, while she is um, speaking. So I, that gave me a lot of comfort. So I slept on Twitter. I, and then the topic of your note keynote speaking that day was the 360 woman. Hmm. And then after you finished that day, there was a restless lesson in my heart. Covenant University. It was Covenant. Yes. One of those private universities. There was, I knew this was the message I needed to take further. Hmm. I knew this was it. Hmm. I picked it. I prayed about it. I believed there was so much peace. Hmm. I knew this was it. Hmm. I knew this was it. And then I started. Now, in taking it back to what you just said as to you need to, you need to articulate your dreams. I remember when it started, I was not very articulate about what this you remember whenever I talked to you about it? I'm sure you, you and FD will look at me. What, what? Yes. But you yes. all kept, and that's why one of the reasons why I cannot trade the relationships I have, the relationship that we have with you and FD for granted. Because even when it wasn't articulate, yes. God gifted me with mentors like you that could still cheer but me But not on. everybody has that opportunity. Yes. And yes, so ma'am. that's why it's important that even when you were sharing with us and you were not articulate, yes, because you believed in it, mm. Uh, you you yes. triggered something in us yes, man. Yes. that made us say, okay, we'll support. It doesn't make it doesn't really make sense yet, mm. but we'll support. Last year we were there. Yes, FD and I dragged yes. him. Yes. We're not speakers. Yes, we man. showed up, we spent mm. maybe 10 minutes or whatever, mm. two pictures, and then we left. Because your what you were using was you were using your dream to draw us in. Mm. You were using your dream to draw us in. Mm. You've drawn me in again this year. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? And I'll keep drawing. Yes. yes. <laughs> so you yourself mm. out there to have that sense of this is what I want to do. I'm so passionate about it. And then that your passion is infectious. Mm, amazing. Fantastic. I would allow you go right now because I'm sure that uh, if we continue with the questions, we will, we will not end today. Thank you very much, Ma. We are grateful to have you once again. And we cannot wait to the next time we'll have you grace our occasion at 360 Women Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you.